Hi, uh, my name is Daniel Duan, and welcome to my video. So, what are we doing today? Um, I I wanted to write a little project in Swift, and I thought, you know, why not make a recording out of it? Uh, just try something out, right? So here we are. Um, what we're going to build is a bit array so bit array and i'm gonna start it in a playground um so let me explain my motivation of building this uh, this uh, project um i had another project that may or may not uh, uh going to use a a lot of bits and uh, there isn't a native way to represent an array of bits uh, in Swift other than using say literally an array of balls right uh, this is logically what I want is just a list of balls in order and I need random access by index so it's this is this should be good enough except in the in that project uh, I need to be very conservative about using memory. Um, so a, uh, I'm not sure how to prove this uh, in a straightforward way, but in Swift, even though in theory you can use one bit to represent bool, zero or one, uh, you don't, right? So this is a straw man yeah, explanation, but if you look at the memory layout of uh, the stride of bool is one, and that one represents what? Let's look at the documentation. Uh, memory layout. If you look at stride's documentation, it says number of bytes from the start of one instance of t, which is bool in our instance, and to the start of the next when stored in array right so that perfectly explains that at least by the api contract a bool should take a whole byte but that is prohibitive um, in my other project that may or may not use this thing we're building today um, but i do know that uh, in foundation actually in core foundation there is something called a bit uh, vector CF bit vector. Um, I'm not. I haven't looked into its um, storage usage or anything like that. But I assume that's a better alternative to use uh, in production uh, if you need like a bit, a bunch of bits. And as you can see, it's a CF. It's a core foundation API. So you gotta use the C functions to. You know, set bits, get bits, uh, flip bits, create the whole uh, vector. But it should be uh, writing a vector probably is going to be better than what I'm building here. Anyways, um, the, the other project has not depend uh, needed anything from foundation or core foundation yet. So I could import cf vector a uh, bit vector and introduce foundations fund, uh, as a dependency to that project but is it worth it i think not also then we wouldn't have a video right so let's get to it mm. so i want a bunch of bits but there's no native way in swift as far as i know to represent a true bit so we have to start somewhere right so let's start by introducing a store uh, I'm gonna call it um, a buffer or a store it's going to private and we're gonna use the uh, canonical or conventional byte representation so we're gonna use bytes uh, array of bytes uh, as our backstore uh, and obviously it's unsigned integer 8 and 8 
represents eight bits, right? So we can store eight values in an unsend integer. And let's write an initializer. And I think the obvious interface for in for initializing a bit array is to ask the user to tell us uh, how many bits they want to store. So we're gonna take that and we actually going to store it as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is remember this information. And like I said, each, uh, I'm gonna use uh, unsigned integer and byte interchangeably from now on. Um, so we can store eight bits in a byte. So that should, should be easy to figure out how many uh, bytes we're going to use given the number of bits we need to store, right? Um, so there is a way, I looked it up earlier in Swift, to get um, the result of a division, a true mathematical division back with the uh, uh, result of a division and a uh, modulo altogether in Swift. Um, I guess I should explain why we need that. So let's start by naming the two results. We're going to get the result of division and call it, uh, I don't know, byte count. And we're going to get the remainder. Remainder. And we're going to take the Bitcoin bit count and use the API quotient and remainder. Divide that number by eight. So what's happening here is we're going to divide this integer by eight and the result of that is in byte count and the remainder of the division goes to bit remainder. And in case it's not obvious, if we have some, if we have anything remains, that means like the number uh, from the division is not enough the number of bytes and we need to add one more byte on top of that. So uh, if the bit remainder is greater than zero, then we need to add one, otherwise we don't add anything to the number of bytes we need. And we're going to, we now have enough information to initialize our store. Um, so we couldn't say self.store equals the unsigned integer array start by repeating I'm gonna put in zero for now byte count is the number of bytes so we'll, ha we'll always have some uh, maybe zero or more extra bits in our store and that is okay um, oh, I mean to type self dot here um, Okay, so say if we if we have zero bits, oh, let's just test it, right? Um, I'm gonna make this temporarily not private, and let's test it. So if I don't need any bits, then my storage count should be zero bytes, right? Uh, similarly, if I need one bits, then I'm gonna need a whole byte to store it. Uh, that's true for two bits up to eight bits, right? So all these values should be one, but once I go to nine bits, we're gonna use two whole bytes to store it. So that seems reasonable to me. Uh, going to make this private again, because if we want to expose the byte uh, implementation detail, we should do it uh, later. Um, also, um, I use zero here, but actually, I'm gonna allow user to customize that. So, and I'm gonna 
default at zero. So not sure pattern is the right parameter, but uh, we'll think about naming things later. Okay. All right. So we have successfully initialized our storage for the bits. Um, well, hopefully we have enough for what the user intend to store, right? And we're not going to let the user um, add to the storage. So once you initialize this type, it's gonna have a fixed storage. And since we call it array, naturally, we want to give user the subscript interface. And um, the uh, we're gonna allow random access, so they can give us an integer, and we'll tell them, hey, whether that bit at the position is true or false. So we're gonna get a getter and a setter here. Uh, and to make playground happy, I'm just gonna return false here. All right, now let's think about what does it mean to have a subscript? First of all, like I can have arbitrary number of bits and uh, underneath our type, we're storing them eight by eight, right? So given a index that represents the position of bits, conceptually, like we're storing the bits like this, right? Uh, So in memory, imagine this is one byte, and each x can represent uh, either zero or one. Uh, I'm using the same letter, but they imagine they're placeholders for actual value. Then I'll have a bunch of this, right, in memory. Let's say four bytes, and we're gonna use some of it, like. Uh, and when users say I want uh, the byte at this position, uh, the bit at this position, we first of all need to figure out, okay, we need to get to, we need to look at the second byte. And then we need to look at, okay, out of this eight positions in the second byte, uh, we need to look at the specific one. So. What's happening here is uh, user will give us uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, so this is the ninth position. If we start from zero, this is 10th, this is 11th position. So user will say, hey, give us index uh, value at index 11. And then we need to figure out, okay, that's the second byte. And the way we can figure that out is divide uh, 11 by uh, by eight, then we'll get one, which happened to be the index uh, of this byte. And then we again, will get the remainder, which, um, you know, eight, uh, we, we're at 11, right? 11 minus eight is uh, three. And that happens to be the index of the bit within the byte, uh, if that makes sense. So we need to do this again, basically. Except we don't need to mutate anything. And this probably is better named as such. We don't have a bit count here, it's an index. So we take the index, we divide it by eight. The result of the division is uh, the position in the byte array and the position in the byte for the bit itself. I guess I'll keep the uh, straw man value here. And the next thing we need to do is, okay, now we're within one bit, right? Let's, uh, now we're looking at a specific bit here. Um, given this bit, 
Now, given this 8 bits in a byte, how do we get the value of 1 bit? Specifically, we don't really want just this value. We want whether it's 1 or 0. Remember, these are bits, right? So it's either 1 or 0. And the classic way to do that in, like, you know, they teach this in, I think, computer science classes in college is to use a bit mask. And let's use our old example here. So there's this bitwise, um, there's this bit, I guess it's a trick. I didn't think of it, I just knew it uh, from memory that if you, we use this uh, integer value, which we call a bit cast, uh, which has only uh, a, a one of the eight bits being one and the rest being zero, and we use a bitwise um, uh, and operation with the with our real uh, storage byte value, then what's going to happen is no matter what this other irrelevant bit are, if they're if it's one one and zero is zero, if it's zero one and a uh, zero and zero it's zero, right? So we're basically when we apply uh, bitwise and the result for all these other bits are zeros, and for this. A special position where we have a one in the mask uh, will have the object basically if the pos value of the position is one, one and one is one, one and zero is zero. So uh, what the result of that is uh, all these other values will become zero and this this one value depends on the original value it will be uh, will be the same uh, as the original value, uh, like I explained before. And the side effect of that is, if this original value it, at this position, the bit position is zero, then this whole thing becomes zero. Otherwise, is non-zero, right? This is no matter which bit we're talking about, this won't be zero. This is either zero or not zero. And so, if it's not zero, then that means the bit we're interested in is not zero. Okay, that's a pretty, I think, extensive explanation. Uh, to review though, all we need to do here is grab our bytes as calculated uh, from the store, and then we're going to apply our bitwise AND, which is this, and a bit mask. Okay, so now we have to get the bit mask value uh, for our bit position. Again, in this case, it happens to be three, zero, one, two, three. Okay, so I need a bit mask for each position. Again, a bit mask is happens. It's just a, a a byte with only one of the bits being one. So it doesn't matter. Um, how we are ordering the bit mask. They, what only matters is each position uh, from zero to seven matches a different bit mask out of the eight possible possible values. So, so I'm gonna say index for maybe called position or index. I like index better. So we have eight potential values for index. Each one will give us a byte uh, having the bit mask as its content. And all we need to think about is this, which is the index. Uh, by default, we're gonna say uh, fatal error. Zero seven got index and we're going to handle 0 to 7 now um, if it's 0 we're going to return again this value doesn't matter as long as it's unique to the other 7 value but for the puny human understanding including mine understanding I'm going to use this actual 
ordered scheme here. And for the ease of editing, just bear with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the patterns I was talking about. Only one of the bits is one. I mean, they actually represent a integer value, but in our case, it doesn't matter what it represents. I may swim. Okay. All right. Now this gives us the mask, and our job is almost done here. Uh, we just uh, we already figure out the bit position. Uh, again, think about here. Let me add some visual here. Just realize I can do this. This is your example. Okay. So we're going to get the mask for this position. And as I explained, if I use the bit, bitwise and, we will get the desired uh, effect. I think. Oh, right. This has to be greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then we know that that specific bit from the mask is, uh, is not zero. OK. Uh, maybe, maybe I should uh, open up the documentation for bitwise operations. Okay, so we just used bitwise and where if uh, if uh, either uh, if either of the operands are one, then the result is one. If there is a zero in either of the operand, then you get a zero, right? And we're gonna use other bitwise operations next. So uh, for setting the specific value, again. Uh, we are storing them in bytes, so we're going to create a new byte value and store it at the index of our store, right? Uh, and the task is similar in that we need to map the index uh, of the bits into the store, and that includes the index for the byte and then the position inside the byte, so this is exactly the same. And uh, our new value, again, this is setting a bool to, uh, with the subscript syntax. So there are two possibilities here. And depends on whether the new value is true or false, we'll do different things. And we need to do our bitwise operation again. So let's go back to our example. Don't want to explain how, to, how the byte count works here, because it's the same. So if uh, we, the new value is true, then we're going to have to look at, given an arbitrary uh, byte of 8 bits, hmm. return false. Who's returning false? Nobody. Okay. Hopefully the bit the playground will be happy this time. Anyways, um, I was starting to explain given the arbitrary eight bits, how can we use the mask to set the desired uh, bit position to one, right? And then let me put back my same mask here. Let's say I want to set this, no matter what its original value is to uh, one and then keep this time we want to keep the rest of the bit values right again this is another one of those tricks that you just kind of know um, so if we do a bitwise and um, I guess bitwise or operation 
then no matter what this value is, uh, again, two possibilities. If it's one, then one or zero is one. If it's zero, then zero or zero is zero. So this value will stay the same when ORed with a zero. And uh, if you look at uh, this other value, no matter what it is, if you, no matter true or false or zero or one, when you OR with one, you become one. So that's how we force this bit to be one and keep the rest of the bits as is, right? So it's pretty obvious what we need to do here. So again, we're gonna grab our bytes first. Uh, store will uh, go down this specific value. We're gonna perform the bitwise OR, which we can use in this syntax. And same thing for the mask. We know the position uh, to mask uh, logic already. So I claim that this will generate the right uh, byte to set to our store. And for the other case, how can we use our bit mask to set this bit to uh, zero, right? Uh, well, uh, we can't just use this value because, uh, yeah, you can set this value to zero, but um, anyway, uh, the way I'm thinking is first, we need to reverse this bit mask, which again, is pretty easy. But this is a result of reversing this mask, right? So one becomes zero, zero becomes one. And once you have this, then you can simply use the and uh, operator, bitwise and again. And what's gonna happen is one and one will be uh, one, one and zero will be zero. Again, I said the original value last in this uh, observation. So basically that just means, um, again, if it's zero, then, uh, well, after you add with one, you remain zero. If it's one, then two ones makes a one. So you stay the same when, when the mask uh, after reversal, with reversal is one. Only like if it's uh, you're adding with zero or a special bit, then you become zero no matter what your original value is. So that's just a long way to say what we need to do here is again, grab our bytes and mutate it, except this time is a bitwise and we're gonna get our mask uh, for the position, but first we need to reverse it, bitwise uh, um, inverse. So what's happening here is the not operator is being used to flip the bits within our byte. And then we're gonna do the bitwise and again, which we did uh, earlier. Um, uh, we can also look at bitwise or, which is which means if um, either of the operand is one, then you get a one. Only when both of them is zero are zero, you get a result zero. Anyways, uh, these are pretty simple stuff uh, in, uh, in, in theory anyways. So now we can do a little test of what we have. So let's make a bit array, right? Uh, let's say I want um, 17 bits. Then I'm gonna make the, uh, the, the fourth bit starting from zero. Well, let's look at it first. Uh, I expect this value to be zero because I didn't provide any pattern when I initialized the array. Um, also hoping that playground will work. Let me restart it. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so the bit value at the three index is false when we start. And I can set it to true. Ah, great. Now uh, the compiler is telling me you need this to be var, which is great, which makes, you know, this uh, struct is paying off here. Uh, now we can set it, and we if we read it again, uh, I believe this will be true. Great. Um, we can set it to false again. And that should be false now. Cool. And so uh, if you th look at these, uh, the think about the efficiency uh, of using this interface, you'll realize that it's uh, big O1 because yes, we did one constant operation, which should just take one instruction, CPU instruction, to get these two values. And then we use the array interface to get random access to the byte, which should be 01, uh, however many operations that takes. And then we did a lookup. And if you see past the lookup, it's just a bitwise and or all, or uh, maybe in this case, a, a inverse first. So the, the most expensive part, uh, I think, is the lookup because it's calling to a different function. And we can even make that better by inlining the function. Uh, as, at least I hope this will inline the function. I'm not going to verify though. Okay, so what I was trying to say is the operations should be pretty fast. And to make this slightly even better, um, since we claim this thing is an array, we might as well make it uh, more swifty, um, we can make it random access collection pretty easily, and then we'll get all kinds of goodies out of that. So if we just take the compiler's hint here and add some stubs, okay, it's telling us we are missing some indexes, so that's easy. Um, array starts from zero. And it ends as the value we already have, which is the count the user give us. And if everything goes well, that's all we needed to make this a random access collection, which is awesome. Because now we get all kinds of free stuff uh, from, uh, from the uh, Swift standard library, for example. So all of a sudden I can say a dot map and then just like convert this thing into a string right like this so this should work and this should help us uh, with debug as well okay maybe I can just say like string dot init about that Okay, so we get we should get seventeen different uh, string values that says true, false, true, false here. If I can click that, please. All right. We're only seeing the first six. That's okay. We can expand it to see more. Um, let's delete this mutation. And then we will see like the, th the, the, the bit at the third position is true now. I can also make this the next one true. And then we should see the result of that. Oops. All right, so true, true, All right? Okay, cool. All right, now I have almost everything I want. Uh, the, the next thing to do is, I guess, throw this thing into a, a project and make things uh, public as needed. 
this for example would be public this would be public and these has to be public as well I guess I can do that in a different video or off camera but yeah there's our bit array yay thanks for watching